Good afternoon. Today I have the unique privilege of introducing Dr. S. Iyappan, who worked as the Director General of ICAR New Delhi. As part of today's interview, we have Dr. V. V. Subhanan, Chief Editor Fishing Chimes, as the interviewer, and Dr. George John, former advisor, Department of Biotechnology, and former Vice Chancellor of Birsa, Birsa Agricultural University, and Dr. J. K. Jenner, Deputy Director General, ICAR. You must have a wish list of this. Can you share some of your wish list? Uh, thank you very much. You're all experts here, so I don't uh, need to say much. Uh, we already, some several things that have happened are uh, there is a Ministry of Fisheries at the center, the National Fisheries Pol Policy Comprehensive One. Uh, it's, it's become a part of the blue economy, the Sagar Mala program. The Prime Minister, Matsya Sampada Yojana, PMMSY, uh, recent uh, budget announcement of the removal of the import duty on shrimp brood stock, and so on. So, several things are ha already happening, what we are, uh, you know, what we are discussing and wishing. Um, a few points at the, this time is could be uh, a strong fish intake mapping and, uh, and a strong databases, because we always talk of per capita fish consumption of, of around 12 kilograms. And uh, we assume that 60% of the uh, country's population to be fish taking. So maybe it could be updated. So fish intake mapping on a continuous basis and also strong databases uh, would be required. Uh, what we wish is a resilient fisheries and sustainable aquaculture, uh, climate smart fisheries with precise tools and uh, products, uh, both in uh, marine and inland areas with fisher safety. So that's something several new uh, tools have been brought in for fisher safety uh, and, and uh, it could be satellite uh, and, uh, promoted. Now it is sort of uh, deep learning tools, certain things are coming up. So fisher safety is another important thing. The deep sea and island fisheries, for example, tuna fisheries uh, could be you know, made more commercial. And uh, now if we are looking at you know, a possibility of the extension of the national uh, jurisdiction zone, you know, as we as we call, as we, if it becomes uh, from 200 nautical miles presently, if it becomes 350 and so on, you now that will be that will require a lot of enhanced capacities in terms of you know fishing and then uh, transport, logistics and so on. Similarly, in inland fisheries, um, the ecosystem-based uh, fisheries management and smart fishing, smart fishing gears, you know, would be would be needed. And uh, India having such kind of uh, expertise in uh, in IT area, I think these are many things that are possible. With an interfacing, uh, we are seeing in agriculture, several things are coming in, smart, for regard to smart farming, uh, several of those tools and products and concepts uh, could be brought into in, in, into fisheries also. Uh, I think, you know, we with regard to uh, aquaculture, we need to have some kind of resource budgeting. Uh, particularly with regard to water and energy, if we want to become smart farmers. And uh, one wish is with regard to indigenous uh, shrimp brood stock, uh, a strong uh, brood stock base that we would have indigenously. Mm -hmm. Diversification in all domains of aquaculture, marine, coastal, and freshwater, including cold waters. The biodiversity utilization index uh, needs to be enhanced. And when we have come this far, and also, as, as I said, IT enabled. Uh, an ecosystem that we have. Can we have seed portals, uh, strong seed portals in all these uh, uh, domains of uh, aquaculture, uh, as I said, uh, marine, coastal, and freshwater? Then uh, also, possibility of say, we already have a lot of uh, uh, value addition and processing happening in with regard to shrimp. I mean, that's our that's our main exporting strength, you know. So similarly, secondary fisheries. And aquaculture can it help? So that's where subsistence farming could be, you know, given a commercial dimension. So when it comes to freshwater aquaculture, also that secondary aquaculture portion with regard to value addition, primary processing happening in 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 the different tanukas and districts. If that comes in, that will be very good. That will uh, enable the farmer greatly. Now uh, the annual fish production around 14 million tons, uh, projected to be 22 million tons by 2025 and 25 million tons by 2030. Uh, so freshwater aquaculture has to provide more than 50%. When we look at all the segments, uh, freshwater aquaculture has to uh, provide that uh, 50 to 60% of the production. So enabling that uh, that segment, and then also the contribution uh, 
of fisheries uh, end up with the fisheries. That's what we always call to the GDP of the country is about 1.24% today. So maybe can it become around, uh, can it double? Can it be 2.5% in the next uh, 10, 10 years and so on? Even all the governmental schemes and the support that uh, that is being provided to fisheries sector. The job provision, job you know, is also very important, job generation, job provision and equity along the supply chain for all stakeholders uh, would be, would be, is being enabled, should be further done. And uh, fish as a fish, a preferred protein source, uh, fish for food, fish for livelihoods and fish for all. Finally, the wish is for a happy, happy and healthy India. And I think uh, this is what is the fish list. At this time, I would like to once again thank uh, Fishing Chimes and um, I would like to remember everyone uh, that I have met who have guided me, mentored me, taught me so much and uh, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with deep feelings, I would like to offer my salutations and thanks to uh, everyone who has, uh, who, has, uh, who has enriched my life. Thank you very much.